So, uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Again, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all so much for your, uh, your giving and your gracious gifts. We thank God for all of you. Uh, and of course here, uh, we, don't, we don't deal with tithing. Tithing was not money in the Bible. Tithing was not a, uh, uh, it was a commandment under the law, and we're, we're under grace. So we don't deal with that, but we do thank you for your generous gifts. Uh, people have an opportunity to give. You can go on the website, buttonoutfellowship.com. There's an address or a, a button that you can give if you so choose to do so. Again, for all of you that do, we really appreciate all of you for that so that we can continue to uh, grow this ministry uh, and that we continue to, to do things like G3 and all of the things that we have going on here. So again, we thank you for that. And uh, more importantly, we just thank you for uh, your, your, your listening ear, okay, so that you could uh, not only uh, understand the truth of God's word, that you may also be able to share it, okay, with other people. And that's, uh, that's most importantly what I thank you for, the fact that people are sharing the ministry, okay. There's a lot more people that are viewing online and a lot, a lot of different places. Uh, there was a lady I just saw uh, from Ports, Elizabeth, St. Africa. Uh, that's watching. So there's a lot of people that are watching from all over the world, and it's because people that, like you all, are sharing uh, uh, the ministry and about the truth of God's word. So again, I really, really appreciate that the most because uh, uh, I, I made a post. Uh, I made a post on the church page the other day, uh, and I said, "Good pastors are in it for the in for the outcome, not the income." Okay, uh, and again, so uh, that's what it's all about. Okay, my. Uh, my uh, goal is to teach truth, and that's what I want to teach truth, okay? And so I'm more thankful uh, 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 when you share the gospel because that other people can hear truth, okay? Mm -hmm. God will place it on your heart to give. Uh, as Paul says, so let him give, not grudging of necessity. God loves a cheerful giver, okay? I just teach truth, and I let God worry about that part, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so, uh, so again, uh, I really appreciate all of you, you all right? God worry about you. Right, well, <laughs> 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 not worry about yeah. it. I, I let God handle the other part, okay? Uh, uh, because he's the one that is going to purpose it in the person's heart. Okay, I can't force you to do that, okay? Uh, I will be out of order for trying to do God's work, okay? So my job is to just teach truth, okay? Uh, so again, thank you for that correction, because God is not worrying about anything. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now, let's get back to it. Uh, First Corinthians chapter number 7, all right? Uh, we left off right at verse, what, 12? Yeah, verse 12. We'll pick up here. All right, but to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him what? Not put her away. Okay, so if the person is, is willing to stay, let him not put her away. Okay, look at verse 13. And the woman which hath an, un, an, an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not what? Leave him. Okay, so again, even if the marriage is a believer and unbeliever, man or woman, okay, it's not grounds for divorce, okay? Because again, Paul is, is, deal, is, is answering a letter from these carnal Corinthians, okay? And so when he answered them, he had to be answer them in such a way, all right, that they didn't go off the deep end because they were already so carnal anyway. Mm -hmm. He's not advocating divorce, and he's not telling you to abstain from marriage, okay? That's not what he's doing, okay? As a matter of fact, let's go to 1 Timothy 4 real quick. Uh -huh. I'm just thinking, too, though, that... If the person is unbeliever, you knew that when you married them. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, right. And, and in some cases, that is the case. You know, they knew that before they married them. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. First Timothy 4. Yeah, in some cases, they knew that before they married the person. Okay. Uh, and then they try to make this drastic change. All right. And again, people are going to do, my wife always say, people are going to do what they want to do, okay? Whether you tell them, whether you holler at them, whether you yell at them, they're going to do what they want to do, okay? So when it comes to the Word of God, you have to allow people to do it when they want to do it. You forcing the Bible down somebody's throat is really hurting your chances of getting them to understand what you're saying, okay? We have to be patient. We have to be gentle, okay? All right? We don't have to always throw the Bible down people's throat. People don't want to hear it. Because I can remember a time where I don't hear nothing about no Bible. And if I thought somebody was going to talk to me about the Bible, I went the other way. Okay? So, so we got to remember there are other people who are the same way. Okay? 
one of the things, the compliments that I always get when I'm around people is that, man, I didn't know you was a pastor. You know, I'm thinking, well, what need would I have to tell you that, okay? <laughs> okay, because I'm a regular person just like you are, okay? And that's how I conduct myself, okay? All right, so whether I'm a pastor or not has nothing to do, okay, with anything. I, I, more importantly, I'm a member of the body of Christ. That's it, okay? So, so again, uh, and people are so surprised and shocked, not because of my behavior, okay, but surprised and shocked because most pastors always come out and express that as if they're somebody, okay? All right, but again, I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm just one member of the whole body, okay? All right, so again, uh, uh, one thing we have to be careful of is, is understanding that we are all members of the same body, okay? And again, pushing it down somebody's throat is going to draw them further away. Because again, it says, consider yourself. Okay, when you were out there doing what you wanted to do, you didn't want nobody talking to you about no Bible and God. You wanted to do what you wanted to do, okay? All right, and then, you know, and, and the you know your parents, the chance they get, they'll, you know, slide it in there, you know. Uh, that's what you, it's the same way that you have to do, okay? Because, again, who wants people more saved than you do? God himself, okay? Because his will is that all men be what? Saved, saved and come into the knowledge of the truth, okay? So, again, don't get in his way. Okay, because you want something. Because again, that, he wants it more than you do. And the Lord drew us unto Himself. Right. So if He's doing the drawing, right? You know, we're yeah. working harder than He. Right. He, he has to draw. Absolutely. Like He did us. Mm -hmm. And it comes by the way of the word. A lot of us just want it because, and again, I always remember that woman Sunday school class at, at the old church. It was a lot of studying going on. People just wanted to know the Bible. Whatever the reason, okay, people wanted to know the Bible. Okay, and again, when you're searching for truth, God will see to it that you find him. Okay, because he be not that far away. Okay, so understand, when you're really searching for truth, you're going to study and study and study, and then you're going to get it, okay? Because, because God is the reward of those that diligently seek him, okay? I just want to say, I, uh, that's in agreement to that. That's how I was. And we was at the spring game, and I know many heard this many times, and that's when Reed had the opportunity uh, to minister truth to me, and uh -huh. that's how I ended up here. That was right. just our spring football game. Right. Just so happened we came to the same high school. We went back a couple years later just to check out our team. Right. And we would, he didn't bring up the Bible at all. Right, he right. asked me where I was at, at that point in my life, and we went to talk, and he said, X, Y, and Z, and now I'm sitting right here. Right, right. Amen. 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 I was really seeking truth. Like, I was like, right. I'm the church thing. I'm reading my Bible, even though I still wasn't reading it. Right, right. You know, according to truth, but however. You know, and, 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 and sometimes, like you said, some people aren't really seeking you know, truth. I had an instance last week when I went skating, okay? Uh, I had the opportunity to, to talk about the Bible, even in the skate ring, all this loud music playing, uh, because somebody had a question about tithing, okay? Because their particular church that they went to supposedly raised $21,000, okay? And then uh, the uh, 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 one of the young ladies there was asking about tithe. And so it was a group of people there, and I said, well, what do you all think tithe means? Uh, they were like, oh, it's tithe of your, your money, your time, and, you know, all this, the religious stuff that people tell you. Uh, and so I was looking like, okay, and I was looking like, well, I don't really know if they really want to hear this because people are trying to skate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but, but it was an opportunity to where I, I pulled up my phone. I said, listen, I'm going to show you all because I want you to believe what the Bible says, not what I'm saying. So I pulled up my phone and had the Bible there. And they were like, oh, wow, you know. And one of the young ladies was like, I'm going to go get my money back. You know? <laughs> because they raised that much. You know? <laughs> but, but again, but, and again, you know, they were very, you know, thankful at the time. You know, they said, oh, we're going to come to church, you know. But again, sometimes people don't really want to really know and find truth. They're just comfortable where they are. Okay, so a lot of times, okay, so some people, again, are seeking truth. And some people, like, even when they hear truth, they may not be ready to move just yet, okay? Uh, because, again, a lot of them there, now they understand. So whenever they go to church, they're going to know, because I'm sure if they went to church today, they heard something about tithing, okay? So, so now every time they hear it, it's going to register them, but the Scripture don't say that. And the more and more you do that, okay, the more and more you have, you understand that now when people hear things, that the word and the word God will do just what it does. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay? So now when they hear about that, 
they're going to always think about that verse, okay? And it's going to keep cutting at them. It's going to keep cutting at them, okay? And so now, uh, the more they, if they want to hear more, okay, now the more they want to learn, now they're going to see some other differences in Scripture. They're going to learn more truth, all right? And then once you really are seeking it after truth, like he said, you'll be sitting right in here, okay? Because that's the, that's the whole key, uh-huh. Now, I was just um, sharing about, on my way um, back home from Atlanta, Uber driver picked me up from my daughter's house, and and uh, it's just how the, the Holy Spirit works. I was like, one minute we were talking about where I where I was going and where I was coming from, uh -huh. and then he, for some reason, started talking about this church that he was in, and him and his wife there and just studying and everything. And we got into the word, and I, and and it just started coming, you know, like right, right. the Holy uh -huh. Spirit just started. I was just telling him about. You know, right division, and right, I was right. that you need to study from Roman to right, Philemon, right, and, right. and and he, he it was like a light switch went right. on in him, and I was like, oh my God, you know, right, it was like right. that kind of moment. Right, right, like, right. Oh Lord, the Lord just intervened right, right there, right, and right. just yeah. we just had this spiritual conversation, and he right. said, you don't know how much you helped me. Right, and right. I guess it was something that he was right on the edge, edge of, right, and he right, was in right. his church, and he right, was saying, right, right. I just don't feel right. He right. said, I just something ain't right. Right, and, right. And I said. Oh, lady, you just don't know what you <laughs> did, you know. And I, I was like, oh, Lord, you just don't know what God just did. Right, 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 right. Like, it was <laughs> And you so know what? Exactly like it says in the Bible. Somebody else had already planted. And the thing about it is that the person was diligently seeking. Like he, he said, they had been seeking. And again, when you're in religion and you're studying God's word and not just listening to religion, most people, a lot of you in here, and most people that you talk to, is like, something's just not right. Right, right, right. You can't really put your finger on it, but it's something that's just, when you're studying God's word and you sit in religion, it, you, you're going to have that feeling because something is going to be off. Because they say this and they do this, but I, the Bible kind of says something different. Maybe I'm wrong in my understanding. Because then you start to think that. Because, you know, all these people, you know, they all doing it. So maybe I'm wrong in the way, you know, but a lot of it is that's why God is the reward of those that diligently seek it. When you're seeking truth, you have an instance where that's why I say this is not my ministry, okay? Every all, Everybody in the body of Christ has a ministry. Because that guy that you were talking to, I may never see him. So if you would have waited for him to talk to me, he would have never heard truth, okay? So each one of us have a, our own particular ministry. Because I, I may not be able to talk to everybody that you see. All right? That's why when we come to church, we're coming as iron sharpening iron. We're sharpening one another. We're studying to show ourselves approval to God. Because, again, I always reference it, it's like football. Okay? This is halftime. This isn't the game. And religion, the church it, on Sunday is the game. You out trying to outdress somebody. You got to sit in a certain seat. That, that's not the game, okay? We're, we're, in, we're on the same team in here. We're going through the adjustments, you know, getting a little tape, you know, a little, a little, a little God's pad if we hurt. Okay, that's what the church is for. This is just halftime, so when we go back out into the world, that's the game. So when you get instances like that, you're ready to give the word of truth. Now you can do the will of God, and that person like had that light bulb moment. And it's just a wonderful feeling, and you, you, know, you praise God for those particular things like that. All right. Look at this, 1 Timothy 4, look at verse 1. Now talking about 1 Corinthians 7 and marriage, look at this. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of what? Devils. Now, doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to what? Marriage. So a, one of the doctrines of devils is forbidding to what? Marriage. So when Paul talks about 1 Corinthians 7, he's not when he says, I would that you all be even as I, he's not forbidding you to marry. That is a doctrine of devils, okay? That's not what he's doing there, all right? Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 7. So when we look at this issue, Paul is not speaking against marriage. He's not a, a, a telling people to abstain from getting married, okay, or forbidding people from getting married, all right, and nor is he telling people <clears throat> uh, uh, to get divorced, okay. Again, this is a book, the Bible is a book of reconciliation. God wants to be, as a matter of fact, God reconciled himself to us by sending Christ to die for our sins, okay? So God would rather you be reconciled to your wife or to your husband, okay? All right, now, again, this is a situation because it's not, it, 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 
Again, if you're in a situation where you can't live peaceably with somebody, because we're going to get to that here now, okay? Look at 1 Corinthians 7. Oh, what were we at? 14? Yeah, let's read 13. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So the unsaved, the, the saved husband or wife, if the other the spouse is unsaved, let them stay there if they're willing to stay. Okay? Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is what? Sanctified. By the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the what? Husband. Now, let's stop there for a second. Okay? Yeah. Now, there's a lot of misconception with this verse. Okay? Now, can another person... Let me see. I want to ask this. Is there any way that we can be saved from another person's belief in Christ? No. Huh? Is there any way we can be saved because our spouse or somebody else, mama and daddy, or somebody else believes in Christ? No. no. Because I think that if you're married, you can. Um, so let's take let's take this instance. For if you're married, so if I'm married and my wife isn't. Can she be saved by way of my faith? No. no. Be drawn. And shopping there. Yeah, you're supposed to, I mean, two will come one. You should, um, if she doesn't believe, she had a look. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say no. I think yes, she will. Huh? I believe if two become one and you're okay. shopping each other, I think y'all become one. So you're saved by the umbrella of the other person. Man. Okay. If they stick together uh, because if not, because if not, y'all depart from each other. Man. Okay. Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, I think it's it, belief is individual. You gotta have your own That's individual right. belief, but by love and kindness, one can draw another. But it's gotta be a in, every individual belief. Okay. Go ahead, Ted. Oh, I'm gonna say the same thing. I pretty much know when it comes down to your belief. Okay. Now, as far as sanctification, that's like, um, you know, like you're adapting to the environment. Basically, the kid live in a house to where there's a lot of chaos. A lot of times that kid is going to react to what, to, uh, as far as what that kid sees. Okay. Now, that kid was in the house, whether, you know, it was, you know, from a different religion or belief. However, if the right things were taught in order, that kid would have some good characteristics. Right. So preach, I think in this preach, case, preach, preach. when he bring an unbeliever and the believer, he's saying, look, if y'all follow this order, despite your faith and your belief, however, you know, I think that get to the whole kids being clean and all that other stuff. Yeah, okay, that's, that's the question right. that's going to come up next. All right, hold up. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <It's> 1 Corinthians <laughs> 7 and 14, it says, for perhaps the husband who is, and I'm reading from this other version, for, for, it says, for perhaps the husband who isn't a Christian may become a Christian, with the help of his wife and the wife who isn't a Christian may become a Christian with the help of her Christian husband. Otherwise, if the family separates, the children may never come to know the Lord, whereas a united family in God's plan results in the children's salvation. That's what this is saying. Yeah, okay, that's totally wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, now, now, now. It was in keeping to what he but said that he is the, I think is the answer. Right, now, watch this. Watch this. Based on Based on whatever that version is that you just read, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's read verse 16. What I found because I'm all <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let's, let, let's read verse 16. 16, okay. Because it says that the other person is going to become saved. No, 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 no. We're not going to overlook that. We're going to go to 16 first because there's still a lot to be said for 14. But based on what you just read, I want to read 16 because that what that just said is that the unbeliever will become saved because of the believer. Now watch verse 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt do what? Save thy husband. Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt what? Save thy wife. You don't know that because you stay together that you're going to get saved. The unbeliever will get saved just because the other person is saved. That's right. All right. And that also answers the question of verse 14. Can you be saved because your spouse... Of because of your spouse's faith? The answer is absolutely, positively, no. no. Okay? Now, but salvation, okay, is an individual thing. All right? Remember, God dealt with them on the means of justification by according to what the nation did. But for us today, everybody is individually saved. 
right? If I'm married and my wife don't know Christ for herself right. and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, she can't get saved because I'm, I believe because that. you believe it. Right. So now, when you understand this, people run to this verse to, to say just that. Because I'm saved, my husband or my unsaved wife will be saved. But remember now, justification or salvation is not sanctification. Mm -hmm. The reason people say that is because most religion does not distinct, okay, or divide justification from sanctification. All right, justification means to be what? Declared righteous. So the minute we're justified, we become saved. All right, we have salvation. All right, but it does not mean we'll always be sanctified. Sanctification just means to be what? Set apart. Set apart. It doesn't mean salvation. So just because you as a spouse are saved, but your other partner is not saved, does not mean that both members are saved. But what it does mean is that if one person is saved, God can still use the marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what this means. That's what it says in 16. That's what it says no in 16. Right. Because there's no guarantee that you can stay saved to somebody and they'll get saved just because you're saved. There's no guarantee of that. I, well, I think you hit it just right. And it says it here, and, and it helped me too. So it's basically saying the sanctification can be done, not the justification. Right. There you go. So now, let's go back to verse 14. Okay? So now, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the what? Wow. Which means that he's what? Set apart. Not saved by the wife, but set apart. Okay? Look at this. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the what? Husband. By the husband. Not that he's saved, but he just what? Set apart. Watch this. If I may, if, 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 a, per, if, a, if a person wants to rob somebody, okay, will he be more prompt? Will, will, will he be more prone to rob a husband and wife or just a wife by herself? Just a wife. wife by herself. So if you have a person that's in a marriage that's an unbelieving man, he still can do the duty, naturally speaking, of the, uh, protecting the wife, even though he may not be saved. So God can still sanctify the marriage if just the wife is saved and the husband isn't, and vice versa. So sanctification means to be set apart. The husband can still be a sole provider for the home and be, uh, and be not saved. He can still be a father to his children and not be saved, and vice versa for the woman, okay? So sanctification here is not salvation or justification, okay? You cannot be saved on the merits of anybody's faith other than your own. And as a matter of fact, to take, take it one step further, you cannot be saved on any merit of even your own faith. Right. We're saved by the faith of Christ. Amen. So, okay? So understand, this verse is not talking about salvation now. This verse is talking about to be set apart. Because as long, because what did God ordain? Marriage. marriage. So as long as a person is saved in a marriage, God can do something with it. Amen. God can set it apart. Why? Because ultimately it's going to bring glory to his name because he ordained marriage. You see that? And so the, uh, the, so the person that's a believer, you have to continue to do the things of God even if your husband or wife is an unbeliever because God can still use the marriage. Because he honors marriage. Because he honors marriage. All right? You can still talk to other married couples about the, 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 beauty, the beauty of marriage even if one of them is unsaved. Because you don't have to be saved necessarily all right, to do the duty of a husband in a marriage, naturally speaking. Okay? You don't have to be saved to go get, get a job and be a sober out of the house as a man. You don't have to be saved to do that. Okay? You don't have to be saved to, be, to protect your family. You don't have to be saved to be a father to your children. Now, you can be a better husband, a better father, have a, but when you are saved, because now you have the what? Mind of Christ, okay? So you can be better, but you don't have to be saved to be a good father. You don't have to be saved, okay, to protect your family, to provide for your family, okay? You don't have to be saved as a mother to teach your daughter. Now, you can teach them better off. They can be better off when you are saved because you can teach them and bring them up in the admonition of the Lord, okay? But it does not mean you have to be those things to be that, okay? Uh, well, this kind of ties into uh, as well um, us being the new creature as far as that we uh, still naturally have the old self in Adam, but uh -huh. we have that new spirit, um, the spirit of adoption, capital uh -huh. S, that's from Christ. Maybe uh -huh. that 
I don't have to destroy the whole body. Right, but right. However, because my spirit dwells, that one safe husband and wife, uh -huh. in that body, I right. can still get the glory right. out of that living being. Good, good, good point. So, Very yes. good point. Because remember, the mystery, as Paul, we read about in Ephesians 5, is that the mystery that he was speaking about is marriage. Mm -hmm. Christ and the church. Jew and Gentile, one body, one flesh. When you become married, in a sense of sanctification, you become what? One flesh. And with the issue of justification, all right, that's individual. You have to be saved, okay, according to your own belief. All right, and then it's Christ's faith that saves us, okay? So remember, when it comes to this issue now, if the, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, does not mean he will save one or the other. It just means God could still use that marriage to bring, to bring glory to his name because one of them are saved. Amen. Okay? We, everybody got that? Amen. All right, now let's get on. question they're saying about a man marries a woman hoping that she, well, a woman marries a man hoping to change him. Right, you can't do that. And yeah. a woman, and a Man married a woman hoping she will never change. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I want. Right. And, and, and to be to and to be and to be totally honest, to be totally honest, sometimes in marriage, and again, including myself, you try to change the other person to be what you want them to be. When in actuality, you marry them because they are who they were. Okay. So understand when you get into a marriage. And again, I, I was at fault to this to some degree. And what what my wife say? Alright, so so understand, I because a lot of times, you know, uh, uh we think that we have the right way to things to be and the right way that they should be. Well, and in actuality, you have to allow a person to be themselves, all right, to build up the marriage. Each person has needs an identity to build up the marriage, okay, because two are becoming what? One. So you cannot change the other person. That's why when it comes to marriage, don't just be marrying somebody for all the wrong reasons, because you thinking that they'll change once you get married. That's not the case, all right? All right you, you see what you get. Now, and I tell you all the time, if you don't like something about a person, okay, before you marry them, imagine it being 10 times worse. Can you, now, can you handle that? If you can't, you don't need to be married, okay? Because more often than not, it's going to get worse before it gets better, okay? All right, so, so again, because you, know, you don't like everything about the person you're going to marry, okay? All right, uh, I know I'm, you know, I'm a great catch. I'm good at everything, but my wife, there's some things that she dislikes about me and probably dislike them, okay? So understand, when it comes, I was being facetious now, all right? <laughs> now, now when it, but when it comes to certain things, you don't like every single thing about a person, okay? So just imagine the thing you don't like, imagine it becoming 10 times worse. If it's something you don't think you could deal with, you don't need to be married, okay? Uh, so, because when it comes to this issue now, you can't change a person once you, especially once you get married, it's going to be very difficult. It's all already difficult enough to change somebody anyway, all right? And, and now, that even goes to spiritually speaking. Why we, It's almost impossible to make somebody read the Bible, to make somebody come to church. You know, unless you're a kid, you, you have no choice but to come when your parents bring you. But other than that, it's impossible to make somebody do that. So why would you think that in marriage you're going to make somebody do something that you think they ought to be doing? It's not going to work, okay? Not going to work. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 7, look at verse 14. Now, Else, the end of verse 14, else were your children unclean, but now are they what? Oh, what does this mean? That's what I want to know. It's 12 o'clock now. I should leave this for Wednesday. <laughs> what does this mean? Does it mean they're not legitimate? That's exactly what you just said about all of them. The, not legitimate. Illegitimate? Right, okay, expound on that if you can. Because you, you, you're you almost there. Well, it kind of sounds like it means that maybe you had them out of, I don't know, out of wedlock. I don't know. They just weren't legitimate. Though. But if they were husband and wife, though. And that's what I'm asking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm thinking in terms of they're not, they're not getting the guidance uh, as, um, as a two-party or two-member, uh, say, family. Right. Uh, they're missing out the learning that they should be getting because one is not before. while that is true 
All right, when it speaks about unclean and holy, though, that's not the act. That's not accurate, because that is true. The, the obviously God ordained man and woman in a marriage to raise children, because a, a son needs to be raised by his father, a mother needs to be raised by the mother, and if you have both, that creates a great dynamic that God created. Now, not to say because you have great single mothers. My mother-in-law is a great single mother. Okay, you have single mothers that can do the sufficient job. I, however, God created it so that it could be both, so that all the strain wouldn't be on one parent, okay? So, so, so understand when it comes to that, that's not what it's talking about by being unclean and holy. What are we, that's what I want to know. Okay. Is that bloodline or something? Think, all right, now, what, let me see if I can jog your memory with this. Who's the audience? Jews. 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 Okay, so does that... I know. Is that that's just that's just that don't make it something pop then? Oh, oh, so they were they had more than one wife. No, 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 no. I know what he's saying. See, yeah. they, they, never but they were chosen. What was the issue with marriage and they only Israel? They marry within their race. Within right. Their they race. remember now. Back here, they could only marry other people that were a part of the nation of Israel. They couldn't marry any other nations because the nations were considered to be what? Unclean. Okay? Watch this now. The nations were considered to be unclean. So now, if you're in a uh, 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 marriage, okay, the children will be considered to be unclean, although you were married, if you married to somebody outside of your race, which is the Hebrew back there. Okay? All right, so now, well, let's go to a couple verses. All right, go to 1 Timothy. Uh, dang, where is it at? 1 Timothy 4. As a matter of fact, go to Acts 16. So it's not clean versus unclean is what you're saying? Or is it ultimately God's plan? Right, right, right. Yeah. Now, because remember now, and we're going to get to a lot of verses because I, I, I want you to see this. So bear with me. I want you to see this, this issue of clean and unclean as it pertains to the Bible. Not so, because remember now, when Peter had the vision, yep. all right, in Acts 10, what did God tell him? Because he said, that's unclean. He said, whatever I call clean, let no man say it's what? Unclean. unclean. Because now the mystery is involved now. All right? So now this is what Paul is saying to these Jews who would have known about unclean and holy as it pertains to marriage. Okay, uh, uh, go to Acts 16 and, uh, and verse 1. Uh, let's look at verse 1. And then uh, I'm trying to find the other one real quick. Yeah, okay, I got the other verse. All right, look at Acts 16, verse 1 real quick. We have it? Amen. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named who? Timothy. Timothy, which that's Timothy, uh, the son of a certain woman, which when the Bible says certain woman, we know that's talking about who? A Jew. A Jew, okay, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a what? Greek. Greek, okay. Now, watch this. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Dealing with this issue of clean and unclean, uh, uh, holy and unclean, as it pertains to the children in a marriage, okay? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, and let's look at, uh, five, verse 5. Now, before we read this, Timothy was a part of what kind of household? Mixed household. Mixed in what fashion? Jew and Jewish. Jew and Greek and also saved and what? Unsaved. Unsaved. The exact example of what Paul is talking about, okay? Now, watch this. Because of this verse, look at this. When I call to remember, 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, when I call to remember, it's the unfeigned faith that is in me, which dealt first in what? Dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee what? So his mother was saved, but his father wasn't, but yet he was able to be considered holy and clean simply because of his what? Mother and his grandmother. 
All right. So when the, in the marriage now, as it pertains to holy or unclean, if the if the person go back to First Timothy, uh, uh, First Corinthians seven, real quick, and then we'll go to some Old Testament scriptures so you can see this. First Corinthians seven. Verse 14, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified, not saved, but sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children what? Unclean. unclean. So there was a time to where your children, although you were married to the unbeliever, were considered to be what? Unclean. unclean. But now are they considered to be what? Unclean. Holy. All right, watch this. Go to Ezra. Go back to Ezra. Go back to Ezra, okay? Uh, somewhere back there. First and Second Chronicles, Ezra. There you go. First and Second Chronicles, then Ezra. Can anybody memorize the books of the Bible? First half, I can't. Okay, because I remember we used to do it a lot as a kid. I don't even think I can, to be honest. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> But I used to do, know them all by heart. I don't even, I haven't done a trial in so long. I mean, I don't even know if I can. Uh, that's what prompted me to ask the question. Uh, look at Ezra chapter 9. Let's go there first. Ezra chapter 9. So you got uh, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra. Short verse. <laughs> This page should probably be really clean in your Bibles, okay? <laughs> Look at Ezra chapter 9. We have it? Amen. We'll wait for a few seconds. Yeah, I know Ezra, this, we, we, you don't go there often. <laughs> Okay, nine? Yes, nine, and let's look at verse number one. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, when these things were done, the princess came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the what? Lands. Doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Egyptians, and the Amorites, for they have taken up their daughters for what? Yes. Yes. And for their sons, so that the what? Holy, Holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers had been chief in this what? Trespass. Trespass. Because remember now, they were not able to marry anybody outside of the nation of Israel. All right? But every time they did that, their judges, their kings all turned from God. That's what, they're, that's what he's saying here, okay? So now they took upon themselves, their, their uh, sons and daughters of these Amorites, basically all these Gentile nations, okay? Go over to chapter 10. Look at verse... They will follow their gods. They will follow their gods, right? As a, and which is why it goes back to what the uh, Thrower was just reading, which is why there's no... Uh, 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 inclination or there's no guarantee that the, un that the saved person will draw the unsaved. Right. There's no guarantee of that, okay? They, uh, because like you said, they were following, marrying these people, and rather than them coming over to the God of Israel, they were going over to their gods, okay? The heathen gods, which is why God told them not to marry people from other nations. Now again, we know that not to be the case today, but who's Paul's audience? Jews, okay? Watch this. So that's why he's speaking this language, answering the letter that they wrote to him. Because this is how they thought, because this is what they were taught. Just like we were talking about earlier, about people asking uh, God to send them their husband or send them their wife. It's based on what they're being taught. Look at chapter 10, look at verse 1. Now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God... There assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. Why were they weeping? And uh, Sheshaniah, the son of Jehiel, the one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God. Why or how? 
and have taken what? Taken what? Strange, Strange wives. wives of the people of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a what? Covenant, Covenant with our God to put away all the what? Wives. And such as are what? Born. Because they were considered to not, they were considered to be what? Unclean. Unclean. So they would have put these people away. So now can you see why Paul would say, if the person is an unbeliever, don't depart. Right? right? Because what were they taught before? Put to put them away. Them and their children. Put the wife and the children away. That's why Paul says, let the husband, if the unbeliever be willing to stay, let the husband not depart from his wife. Because before it was taught that they were to do what? To put away these women. And it was a what? Covenant to God to do so. So that means if you didn't do it, we know how God dealt with them under the covenant. They will be cut off. Okay? We're not under any covenants or promise of Israel's now. All right. So again, Paul is dealing with people in 1 Corinthians 7, okay, about marriage that this is what they would have known to do. Mm -hmm. So the first instance now, well, we got to put away these people, especially when other Jews who were not in the body of Christ, all right, were coming to say, well, like as what Paul or James did with Peter, when in Galatians chapter 2, when Peter was eating and following the way of the Gentiles, which, and according to Acts 10, with his vision, it was okay to do so now because God had changed the program from that of uh, uh, prophecy to mystery. That of the nation of Israel to the new creature, the body of Christ. So the rules of that don't apply to us today as it pertains to some of these things. Because we're not under the law or any covenants, but we're under what? Grace. grace. Okay? So the gracious thing to do now is don't put them away if they're willing to stay. Even though they may be what? Unclean or unbelievers. All right? All right, look at this. Verse 3. Uh, not, now, therefore, let us, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wise and such as are born of them according to the counsel of who? So this was according to God's word they did this. And of those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the what? Law. But not under the law anymore. That's what Paul is trying to show them. You're not under the law anymore, okay? We're under what now? Grace. Grace. Because remember, he was going to the what first? Jesus. To the Jew first, who would have known this type of teaching right. or who would have thought they were still under this Abrahamic covenant. Right. Okay? All right, now, let's go to... Uh, damn, just well, we can be under the law and grace at the same time. Right, good. I got just, uh, go, go to Romans 7. Romans. Go to Romans 7. <laughs> Already there. Yeah. Go to Romans 7. All right, just give me about 10 more minutes. Give me about 10 more minutes. All right. 10 more minutes. All right, Romans chapter 7. All right, remember, who's the audience in this verse? If you don't know, we'll read it, and you're going to find out who the audience is. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. We have it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Know ye not, brethren, parenthetical statement, okay? For I speak to them that know the what? Law. Let's go to Romans 2 real quick. We may have somebody watching that doesn't really understand right division, okay? And what we mean when we say this. Go to Romans 2, verse 14. Romans 2, verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have what? Not the law. Not the law. Okay, let's go back to Romans 7. So when Paul is speaking to people that know the law, he's not speaking to who? Gentiles. Gentiles. He's speaking to who? Gentiles. Children of Israel. All right, here we go. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, we're back in Romans 7, 1, how that the law had dominion over man as long as he was. Amen. Now, when Paul continues to say, know ye not, he's really saying, this know. stuff you ought to what? You know, okay? So he's asking a question which should be rhetorical in a sense because they should already what? Know this. Look at verse 2. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the what? Law. To her husband so as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her what? Husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called a what? An adulteress. That was the rule under the law. 
But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to what? Another man. You see the difference between law and grace? Yeah. See, when people don't rightly divide, I have some women that say, listen, I can't get married to anybody anymore because I'm divorced or my husband has died. Because that would make me an adulterer if I marry somebody else. No, no, no. You're not under the law anymore. Okay? You are free from that. All right? Look at this now. Verse 4. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the what? Body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth what? Fruit, Fruit unto God. So now that we have that knowledge, let's go back to read 1 Corinthians 7. Jesus. The law had no more control. Matter of fact, go to Romans 10. Sister Troy, you, you, every time you speak, you see? <laughs> look at Romans. Look at Romans 10. Look at verse 4. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Romans 10, verse 4. For Christ is the what? End of the, End of the law for righteousness to everyone that what? Believe. Believe it. So we're not under these covenants to where we got to put away people who are not of the same race as us, okay? We're not under that, uh, that law covenant anymore, okay? We're not uh, 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 forbidding people to marry and telling them to abstain from meats. We're not under those types of covenants. We're under what? Grace. Grace. All right. Having said that, Paul is still not saying to just leave them. Be gracious. If they're willing to stay, be gracious and let them stay. All right? Go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 7. Because, again, God is all about reconciliation. That's why he says, if you leave, right, be reconciled back to your husband. Because it's about reconciliation. He's not advocating divorce. He's not putting down marriage. Okay? He's speaking to the questions in which he was asked. Okay? So now, verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 7. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, not salvation here, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children what? Amen. But now, under, the, under grace and not under the law, because one of you are saved, now your children are considered to be what? Holy. Holy. You see that? That's the difference there. Look at verse 6, 15. But now, and so in objection to, but if the unbelieving what? Depart. Let him what? Depart. Depart, okay? A brother or sister is not under bondage in what? Such case. But God hath called us to what? Peace. Peace. Mm. Listen now, watch this now. We're going to break this down and then we're out of here. Now, what did we just learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that we ought to be as members of the body or that we're going to be? What do you mean by the moon? What do we learn in chapter 6? That we as members of the body ought to be what? We're going to be doing what? Judges. Judges. We're going to be judges. So watch what Paul says in verse 15. A sister is not under bondage in such what? Cases. Cases. When you catch a case, you've got to go before a what? Judge. Judge. Okay? So watch this. So when he says in such cases, that means you can't paint every marriage with a broad straw. You, every case, it might be what? Different. Mm -hmm. You see that? So again, you can't just run to this. And when people run to this chapter about marriage and divorce, they get it all messed up because first of all, they're not rightly divine. Okay? Then they're picking and choosing these right. Because there's a lot, of be, lot to be said here about marriage and divorce mm -hmm. in regards to whatever you want your agenda to be. That's right. Okay? Because, <laughs> you, hey, listen, now you don't need, Paul says, I wouldn't let none of you get married. So I'm single and happy single. You ought to be single. No. Nope. That's right. That ain't what he's saying here now. But if you take that, you can make it say whatever you want. Okay? So that's why we got to study it in context. So in such cases, Paul is only answering their question. Now these Corinthians were so carnal, he had to make sure they understood this is not the case for every situation. That's why he just spoke about us being judges, being able to judge some of these smaller matters, knowing that we should judge the world and judge what? Angels. Angels. So something like this, we ought to be able to make a judge based on the case. Okay? Look at this. Now, then he says the end of this, but God had called us to what? Peace. Peace. All right? Romans 12. 
Romans 12. All right, a couple of verses here. We'll end here. <laughs> way back then. Way back then. When, when you study things, and again, when you study the Bible in context, it makes so much more sense. The Bible becomes alive to you because now the verses that you were unclear about is now clear, and it makes a lot of sense. Why in the world? When I first used to see this, and I remember somebody asking me about this verse when I was in religion. Uh, you know, I gave some religious jargon. They thought it was right. I at least made it sound right, okay? <laughs> but, but understand, it's hard to explain that verse not understanding Ezra and the context of the covenant back then. That's right. That's right. Because how in the world are the children unclean and then holy? It's hard to understand that and to reconcile that verse if you don't know the background of that covenant to where they put away all the wives and the kids. Amen. It's hard to understand that, okay? Look at Romans 12, look at verse 18. Because when he says about, uh, uh, Paul is talking about peace there in 1 Corinthians 7 and 15, all right, when he says, um, but God had called us to peace. So if the person wants to depart, then be at peace and let them depart. If they want to stay, be at peace and let them stay. Why? Because look at verse 18 of Romans 12. If it be possible, as much as, li as lieth in you, live what? Peaceably. Peaceably with how many men? All Even including the spot. Men there has to do with mankind, okay? So if it be peaceable for them to stay, even if they're unbelievers, let them what? Stay. If it be uh, peaceful for them to leave and they want to leave, let them what? Leave. So that you can maintain what? Peace. Because that is ultimately what God is trying to do. He gave, he gave us peace with him and he gives us the peace of him. Because that's exactly what he wants for members of the body. Uh huh. I have a question. Yes. So what the, the husband and wife uh, physically are not, um, doesn't want to follow the order of marriage. And they go off and separate. But however, by law, they don't want to end the marriage. How does that work? Like, I, I want to just live, do what I want to do. Uh -huh. However, I still want to keep the security of having the, uh, the land of the law, uh, uh -huh. legalization of the marriage. All right, now, I will not advocate divorce. I always have to say that. All right, I will say this. What does God see? Our what? Heart. 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 If you don't want to be there, he'd know that anyway. So just stay to say I'm married. I'm not advocating divorce, but what I'm saying is God knows your heart. So if you're just staying with a woman just the sake of marriage, you're doing just the same way as adultery. Yeah. If you're married and you're lusting after another woman, you may not be sleeping with her physically. But the fact that you're lusting, whether you've committed what? Adultery. So if you're with a woman just to say, well, I'm married, and I'm trying to obey what God, no, no, God already know you don't want to be there. Because he can see your heart. So again, you got to use wisdom there. Okay? If you don't think that it can, something that can be reconciled, because again, not everybody understands truth and understands or even wants reconciliation. Even when you give people truth, God has already done the reconciliation. They don't even want to believe it. Something as simple as belief. Okay? So when it comes to marriage, you may be in a situation to where you got involved. Some people may have gotten involved young. Some people may have gotten involved for the wrong reasons. And, it, it, you know, it just, it just don't work. Okay? Especially now that the person is trying to live right and the other person just don't care at all. Okay? You got to use wisdom because God knows in your heart you don't want to be there anyway. All right, because because when you, you can make it look good for us, okay, but he know you don't want to be there anyway. So, again, I'm not telling nobody to get no divorce, okay? I'm not advocating that. I'm just talking to you about some things you got to be judges, okay, and righteous judges that use wisdom. That's what God has called us as members of the body to do, okay? Yes. But what if they're staying there for the children? Which, which, is, which is a good thing because... They, 
naturally speaking, the people who are really hurt emotionally when you get a divorce are the children. Amen. Are the children, okay? So because, again, the husband and the wife are grown enough to understand and get over hurt. The children don't comprehend that as well. you got a lot of people growing up without fathers, without mothers, and sometimes you got it because either the mother won't even allow the father to see the kids, or you got the father that's just sorry and don't want to see the kids, okay? So, so either way, the kids are the ones that are affected. Okay, the kids are the ones that are affected. So again, if you can make peace and stay together, even for the sake of kids, make peace. But if you, it says, if you're able to live peaceably upon all men, you may not always be able to live peaceably. That's why it says, if it be possible. Sometimes you might be in a situation where, listen now, either I'm gonna hurt you or you gonna hurt me. Okay, and that we can't live peaceably together like that. Okay, and kids are in the middle of all that. So. That's not helping the kids because, again, they're going to be the ones that are emotionally scarred. Remember yeah. we, yesterday at a funeral service, we were saying even though these, these people were divorced uh -huh. for a long time, but the preacher was like, oh, yeah, 28 that, years. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. Her family was blended. It's no step. It's no right. nothing. These are my children. These right. are whatever he inherited that's hers. It's right. no and let me get and let me give a let me give the backdrop so you understand the dynamic of this, which is beautiful. The woman that, and I told you about the, the funeral we had to go to yesterday, one of my wife's really, really good friends, her husband passed away. Her dad, okay, is the common denominator. Mm -hmm. Her dad, because her, her stepmom is not married to her dad, mm -hmm. okay? But her dad was married to her mom first and is now married to the stepmom, who the stepmom is a preacher who actually preached the funeral, mm -hmm. okay? So now... She mentioned that, listen, when it comes to the things of God, I've been married to him for 28 years, and me and the first wife, okay, are, are, are great friends. Because how you handle, how the, you treat the first wife, your kids will see that. You see that? And so, again, that was a, that's a great dynamic in the relationship that they have. Because they, we go out, there, we, we went out to eat with them, and the mother, the stepmama was there, the mama was there. We, they all had it. Always, every time we went out with them, they always had it. You couldn't tell anything. You, and I even had to ask my wife. I'm like, but, but is, is, that's the real mama? You know? <laughs> you know? So, because, because it was real, the love, the love was genuine. You know what I mean? And again, now, she, her husband, the one, God bless him, who passed away, they had the same dynamic. Because now they had, she had kids, he had kids, and they got married. And the kids, her kids were crying after him just like his own kids because the dynamic that she had been taught growing up also rested with her okay all right because again and and and, and, and the husband the her father okay the husband okay he is such a peaceful man he is such a peaceful person and that's why it says if it be if, if it be if you can, if it be possible, he's so peaceful. I can understand the dynamic because of how peaceful he is, because he ain't about a bunch of foolish. He just at peace. So he, he's, he. I'm, I'm sure he probably listen now. Y'all, hey, we gotta make this work, and that was it. Because he don't say much. He's always happy. Even in it, she, it, it, it almost hurt me so bad. She broke down right before we were about to enter the church, and she said, "Daddy, I can't do this." And he just hugged his daughter, and he said, I'm going to be here for you. He's just as calm as ever. You know, I, I really respect him, okay, as a man, as a human being, because he is so peaceful. I don't know. I, I was about to fall out crying. Right, right. You know, and, and because because he she just cried for her daddy, and he just consoled her. And you know, it, 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 at first, I almost had to keep myself from crying. But after that, it made me think about how God comforts us. As a father, how he comforts us in a time like that. Okay? Now, I know that she was looking at this as my physical father, but because of who he is in Christ and how humble and peaceful he is, that exemplifies the love of God that he has and the peace he gives us, even in a time like that. Thank you for bringing that up. And that's a very good point because uh, uh, the dynamic there is an awesome dynamic. Okay? And it's an all and, and again, Christ is the center of all of that. Amen. Okay? Christ is the center. All of them are in church. They know God. All right? And they, they love the Lord. And so understand that when it comes to that issue, okay, Christ is the center of that. Because, again, we, if you love God and love the Lord, you can live peaceably. Yes, you can. You can do it. Okay? All right? It's when we go off, as the book of James says, when we go off 
and fulfill and get them to fulfill our own lustful wishes and desires. That's when, excuse me, things go bad. Okay, but thank you for bringing it up. We'll end on that note because that was a. A beautiful thing of how we can live peaceably upon all men, even in a dynamic like that, okay? And so when Paul says that, so remember, when it comes to this chapter, we got to keep things into context and perspective. The audience to whom he's talking to, he's answering questions to a letter that he wrote, that they wrote him, all right? And he's talking about things about marriage and how the Jews would have understood it. Fasting and praying, unclean children. All of that had to do with them back here, all right? Again, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all for bearing with me uh, for this time. Uh, uh, and so, again, thank you all so much uh, uh, for that. All right. Uh, also, uh, uh, thank you all so much for the birthday wishes. For people online, I don't think I answered everybody. Okay. So, so again, thank you for that. Okay. I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, but, again, thank you so much for that. All right. Uh, also, no, next Sunday is Mother's Day. So, the, the 19th, we'll have our Jeopardy game. Okay, so we're going to have our Jeopardy. For those who did not get the questions, let me know, and I'll send you the question bank that we have. That way, on the 19th, you can come. I put it on the Facebook page. The questions are on there. So if you have access to the Facebook page, the questions are on there. But if you want a physical copy, just let me know. Yeah, yeah. If you want a physical copy, uh, if you're on our email list, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, have Dennis to email them out. Okay, and that way you can get that as well. But we'll do that on the 19th uh, in two more weeks, okay? And I, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, that's, I, I want it to be really fun. Uh, I want to combine studying and learning with fun and God and all of that with family and all of that, okay? So, again, bring your friends out. Give them a study guide, all right? We don't want nobody to feel embarrassed. We ain't condemning you if you don't know the answers, okay? It's just we're trying to just have fun and learn at the same time, okay? Uh, and no, my wife does not know the answers, okay? Uh, because she's going to be on a team, so I can't give her the answers, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, no. What is on the list are questions that I thought would be harder that you needed to study for. Okay. There are other it's questions that are going to be on the on the board that I've created. That's not on, the list. That's not on that list, okay? Because it's either multiple choice or it's, I figure it's something that. You should already know. Oh, like Paul. <laughs> no, you not. Right? No, you not. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah. So, no. Trust me. That you, you know these. Okay. You know these. Some of them are really, really simple. Okay. So, can we have our Bible as we doing this? Yeah, we're gonna. I think. I think we settled on two minutes. I think we settled on two minutes, right? Yeah. For each question. I think I might need to do a minute and a half. That two minutes kind of long. Fast with my, uh, <laughs> I'll come. I'll come. I'll, it, that'll be a game time decision. Okay. Sixty seconds. Sixty seconds. All right. Here we go. All right. Uh, nothing. Nothing else. Again. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all for your attentiveness. Uh, uh, again, I, I'm a, a student of the word. I love to teach the word. And again, I love to have you here to hear the word. So again, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, those of you who are uh, uh, watching online, again, thank God for all of you. Uh, and again, we want to thank our visitors that came out to be us today. Uh, they actually, she actually, they actually grew up with my mother-in-law and, and Maurice. Uh, they grew up with them. So, so again, thank you all so much for coming. Hope you enjoyed yourself and hope you come back to be with us. Uh, again, nothing else? All right, Uncle Billy, nothing else? <laughs> All, right, let us pray. All right, let us pray. I, I didn't want to rile you up. Let us pray. Let us pray. Right, let, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this day, this time, and this hour that we're able to come together to study your word, to learn truth, and to know more about you. That way we can serve you in all that we do and bring glory to your name. Uh, Father God, <clears throat> uh, your people perish because of lack of knowledge. And we thank you for the knowledge that you've given us and instilled in us as we study to show ourselves to prove rightly divided the word of truth. Uh, Father God, help us to be content. Help us to learn to be content in whatever situation we may find ourselves in. 
Uh, Father God, give us the uh, understanding of your sufficiency and of your grace uh, that we may walk according to your will uh, without fear. For you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, we thank you for that now. We ask now that you continue to touch those who we may come in contact with who are stuck in religion or denomination. And Father God, who are uh, following man and not God. Uh, we pray now that the scales will fall from their eyes, that they may see the truth. Uh, and from which the God of this world had blinded the, uh, their eyes that the light of the glorious gospel may not shine unto them. Uh, we ask now for the door of opportunity we may speak forth the mystery of Christ to those who are not saved, uh, that they may do so, uh, get saved according to your will. Uh, so in Jesus' name we pray. Pray for those who are sick that we have mentioned. Uh, pray for those, uh, Sister Mich uh, Michelle and her family as they deal with bereavement. Uh, we pray now that you continue to uh, give them the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and keep their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, so in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank God. Amen.